Good morning. I'm Peng Hongzhe, a PhD student from Ocean University of China, research group of Professor Dong Bo. I'm very glad to have a chance to share our work about cyanide and bionic tail binding here. As we all know, the binding is a universal process in morphogenesis. It can appear in many levels. In cellular level, a single cell can change its shape via binding, such as the gut cell bind to open the stomata. A tissue can also bind itself to form some new structures, such as the neural plant bind and sink to form the neural tube. The multi-tissues can also bind together to form some higher level structures, such as the germ layer or the guts. Beyond the tissue, the embryo can also bind itself, and this is a very conserved phenomenon during the evolution. Then we may ask, why the binding and folding is such a common feature during development? May comes from its two very important functions. First one, the binding and folding can make the embryo structure complicated. This movie shows the early stage of the Drosophila embryo, and we can find that at first it's very simple, but with the binding and folding the germline formation, it becomes more complicated. This process is very similar with the pastry. At first, it's only a single layer of the flour and oil, but with the binding and folding and repeat, we can get those complicated multi-layer structures. Another function is that the binding and folding can reshape the embryo to match the space. We can imagine that if we want to put as much as clothes into a suitcase, the best way is to fold the clothes to match the space. The embryo also uses the similar way. It can elongate its body exercise, but with the limit of the cornea, it has to bend to reshape itself from disc-like to the cylindric to match the space inside the cornea membrane. Here, I'm very glad to introduce our favorite model, the cyanide intestinal analysis, a kind of urochordis. It's a group of animals very close related with the vertebrate. We first observe the development process of the cyanide embryo and the funny tail can bend inside the coil membrane. It seems very like the coil membrane served as a physical barrier to force the tail bend. However, when we remove the coil membrane, we found that the embryo can also bend itself to form a very smooth, perfect circle. So this result tells us the cyanide and bionic tail bending is an active process under genetic control. This is the snapshot of Freyworth's movie, and uh, we found that with the coil or not, the bending process is very similar. Now, we may ask, if the coil membrane not the reason to force the tail bend, how the embryo bend itself? Where the mechanical force come from? Refer to previous work, we try to summarize two kinds of cellular process can lead to tissue bending. The first way is the apical contractile to change cell sharp. This process always be found in the neural tube formation of Drosophila. Another way is the discrepancy of cell division rate at different layers. In this picture, we can see the blue layer of the cell divided faster than the yellow layer. So this drives the tissue bending towards the yellow side. To find out which kind of the mechanism involved in the cyanotel bending, we first check the distribution of the cytoskeleton, and surprisingly, we find the enrichment of f actin at the ventral edge of the nodcot at here. 
these 3D movies clearly shows this enrichment in ventral. We also check this phenomena in the development process of the cyanide and found that it's persistent in the whole binding process. In this cross section, we can clearly see this enrichment point at here in ventral, and in the dorsal view, we can't find any differences between the left and the right. So this result tells us this distribution polarity is along the dorsal ventral axis. Here is the quantification. We also check the myosin, the motor protein binding on the f actin, and found the similar enrichment in ventral at here. So those results give us the hypothesis that the centrical ectomyosin contractility may drive the not caught binding. To prove this, we use two ways to disrupt the ectomyosin contractility. First of all, we overexpressed a mutant version of myosin light chain. With this mutant overexpressed, we found the cyanotel binding angle is decreased. We also use the mutant of cofilin to disrupt the turnover process of affecting. And in this experiment, we found the similar phenotype. So those results prove the contribution of cell sharp change of notcon. So what about the second way? Can the cyanide use the discrepancy of cell division rate at different layers to drive the tail binding? This picture shows the structure of the cyanide tail. And we can easily find that the epidermis is the candidate tissues may use the second way to drive the binding because it has cell division and it has more than one layer of tissues. So we first mirror the length of the dorsal epidermis and the ventral epidermis, and the dorsal is longer than ventral, and it also has larger cell numbers. So those results may indicate the dorsal epidermis divided faster than ventral. To prove this, we use the BRDU to mark the cell proliferation and found that the signal in dorsal is more than ventral, especially at this point. In this point, the cyanide tail band with the largest angle, and at the same time, the BRDU signal is very weak here in ventral. We also check this phenomena during the development process and found that it's always persistent in the binding stages. Here is the quantification. So those results may give us another hypothesis that the faster dorsal midline epidermis cell proliferation may also contribute to the tail binding. To prove this, we use two ways to disrupt the cell proliferation. First one is the inhibitor of radically. With this the inhibitor treats the embryo, we found that the embryo tail binding angle is changed. We also specific or expressed a cell cycle factor in the dorsal epidermis. And we found that if we only disrupt the cell division in dorsal, we can force the cell not tail bend towards the dorsal to the opposite side. So those results prove the contribution of the differential cell proliferation of epidermis. Now we get two mechanisms, the asymmetrical contractility of not caught and the differential cell proliferation of epidermis. How these two mechanisms coordinate together? With the help of Professor Feng Xi Chao's lab, we try to build a mechanical model to mimic this process. We first mirror the stiffness of the knot cord, the muscle, and the epidermis with the AFM. And we found that the knot cord has the highest stiffness. 
So this parameter can make to calculate the force from the not called construction. And to put these numbers in the model, we can predict the bending process of the tail. And we found that this bending process is very similar with we observed in vivo. So this result proves the symmetrical not cut construction is sufficient to drive the tail bending. When we come to the epidermis, we found that the force provided by the epidermis is too weak to drive the tail bending. So we propose that the epidermis may play a permissive role to release the tension in dorsal to assist this process. So as a conclusion, the Siona tail bending is the process driven by the asymmetrical contractility of not cut and uh, with the assistance of the faster cell division in dorsal epidermis. This work are finished by Dr. Lu Qiongxue and Dr. Gao Yuan. And thanks for the guidance from Professor Dong Bo, Professor Feng Xiqiao, Dr. Li Bo, and Dr. Liang Xin. Thanks for your attention. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, this uh, very interesting talk. So now we'll be um, taking questions. And so to that end, uh, please ask your questions in the Q&A on the right. And I will uh, ask this question. So Shigeo uh, Hayashi is asking, um, well, first he's saying interesting, uh, and then says, then how the hatch Sayona larvae extend their tail? Uh, is my voice clear now? Yes, we can hear you. So you can answer okay. the question. Thank you. Uh, the cell not help elongation process is uh, driven by a contractile ring. Uh, it's very similar with the cell division process, but this ring not um, divided the cell to uh, to doctor cell, but uh, provide a mechanical force to make the um, to make the not cell longer. So this is the, the way the cell not elongate his tail. Thank you. So James Briscoe is now asking uh, um, uh, following questions. So he says, nice talk. Do the experiments in which tail bending are disrupted also affect the patterning of the embryo? Yes. Uh, this is Bo. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Bo. So uh, yes, we, we check the embryo pattern uh, when we disrupt the uh, binding process. We found that there's a disorganization of this organ uh, in the embryo. So I think uh, uh, this uh, process is uh, is uh, is also disrupted. Okay. So now we have a great question from Anastasia Ellis. What candidate genes do you hypothesize is involved in the non-symmetrical distribution of cytoskeletal elements? I think uh, candidate gene, uh, we can divide it into two parts. Uh, first is the upstream signal from the extracellular. So at that time, we think the uh, it may come from the dorsal ventral axis polarity, but there is a very interesting phenomena we may pay attention that uh, before the not cut finish the intercollection, it has two cell lines, and the ventral cell line first get the polarity, the, the polarity distribution of affecting, but at that time the dorsal line still hasn't the polarity. And when the dorsal line intercollect to at the similar position with the ventral and to contact with the uh, ventral tissues, it can also get the polarity. So we think this signal may, uh, may not a long distance signal, but from the cell cell contact, but which, uh, which molecular play a role in that is not very clear. 
uh, when it comes to the intercellular, uh, some previous work has shown that the uh, the polarity molecular, the APKC, is specific distribution at the ventral side of the knot cut. So that made the molecular to influence the distribution of cytoskeleton. Okay, Thank great. You. So now a question from Tetsuo Tani. Is the epidermal cell division rate affected when the notochord constriction is perturbed? Yes. Uh, I think uh, this part of this uh, uh, contraction, uh, the region of the epidermis is also uh, stopped. I think uh, somehow there is a connection between the notochord bending and the epidermis proliferation. Uh, 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 we don't know the, uh, any, uh, we have no evidence to show this kind of connection, um, but we saw this uh, behavior, uh, binding behavior and producing behavior is consistent. My binding process uh, can transduct some mechanical rule, mechanical signal to the epidermis. This total the, uh, assumption, uh, we have no evidence. Okay. Thank you. And the last question is from Jack Holcomb. Fantastic talk. Do you think this way of bending tissue is conserved? It would be interesting to see if, e.g., amphiotis larvae lacks this actin localization around the notochord. Yes, it's a very uh, intriguing question. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't see uh, more in PO and uh, uh, we Yes, maybe the similar question, uh, but uh, maybe maybe the same, maybe the uh, not the same. Uh, but we can't say anything at this moment. Uh, okay. Hopefully in the future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>